An object in a fluid will either float to the surface or sink down. For example, this apple floats in water as it is moving up towards its surface, but the coin sinks as it has moved to the bottom of the glass. We can also apply the idea of floating and sinking to gases, since remember these are also fluids. But at GCSE, you only need to know about floating and sinking in liquids. So whether an object floats or sinks depends on whether the weight of the object or the upthrust acting on it is stronger. Remember that the weight is a downward force that acts on an object due to gravity, while upthrust is an upward force that acts on submerged objects due to a pressure difference. So for the floating apple, it has a small downward weight force, which we'll label with a W. Then there is also a larger upthrust force, which we'll label here with a U. The apple then has to accelerate in the direction of the larger of these two, which is why the apple moves up towards the surface. But for the coin, it has a larger weight force, so that this is now stronger than the upthrust force. This means the coin accelerates downwards, eventually landing at the bottom of the glass. But is there a way we can predict which of the two forces will be stronger? Objects will sink if they have a density greater than the fluid they're in. This is a key fact you'll need to recall for your exams, but you won't need to be able to explain why it's true. So when certain objects are designed to sink, they are done so using dense materials. For example, we need an anchor to sink to the bottom of the ocean to hold a ship in place. So let's compare the density of the anchor to the water it's in. Sea water is denser than pure water because of the salt dissolved in it. But let's assume it has a density of pure water for now, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. This is actually a value you could be asked to recall in an exam. Remember that one liter of water will weigh exactly one kilogram, and that one meter cubed is equal to 1,000 liters. So there are 1,000 kilograms of water in one meter cubed. Then the anchor could be made out of solid metal with a density of around 7,800 kilograms per meter cubed. This would mean the density of the anchor is much more than the density of water. But what about objects which float? What key property would they have? Objects will float if they have a density less than the fluid they're in. So it's a common misconception that it's weight rather than density that determines whether an object sinks or floats. Which is why people find it surprising that large cruise ships can safely float and carry passengers. These ships would have a mass of around 1 times 10 to the 8 kilograms, which is 100 million kilograms in standard form. Then its volume would be around 1 times 10 to the 6 meters cubed, or a million meters cubed. Remember that to find the density of an object, we divide its mass by its volume. So despite the mass and volume being so big, the density of the ship is only around 100 kilograms per meter cubed, which is less than the 1,000 kilogram meter cubed density of water. But how can the density be so small when the mass is so big? Well, it's because the ship is actually mostly empty space, which increases the volume but not the mass, leading to a smaller density. For your exam, you won't need to recall these specific examples, but you could be asked to explain how objects are designed to make sure they float or sink. But why is it when objects float, they will still be partially submerged instead of being pushed out of the fluid completely? Well, the strength of an upthrust force decreases when less of the volume of an object is submerged. Again, you don't need to know why this is or how upthrust would be calculated, but it is a key fact you'll need to recall and apply. Let's look back at the apple in a glass of water, where it has now reached the surface and come to a stop. It's partially submerged 
but with less of its volume in the water. This means there is less upthrust acting on it. Then, at the surface of the fluid, the object will come to rest at a level where the upthrust balances its weight. That's why there's a specific volume of the apple submerged. The upthrust has decreased just enough so that this is now equal to the weight. The two forces are now equal and opposite, which means the apple can now come to a stop. In practice, we'd probably see it bob up and down a little bit until it found the right level to stabilise at. So can we learn anything else from the level objects float at? Well, the greater the density of an object, the more of it will be submerged when floating at the surface. So for example, let's suppose we have two floating blocks with the same shape and volume. The block on the left is made of wood, while the block on the right is made of foam. As we can see, there is a greater volume of the wooden block below the surface of the water than the foam block. In other words, more of the wooden block is submerged. So what exactly is happening here? Well, remember that the more of an object that's submerged, the greater the upthrust force it experiences. So the fact that more of the wooden block is submerged means it needs more upthrust to remain stable at the surface. This in turn means there is a greater weight force acting on the wooden block, as we needed a greater upthrust force to balance this. And then, since both blocks have the same volume, we can also deduce that the wooden block has to have the greater density. Make sure you understand this explanation, as you could be asked to compare the weights and densities of objects by looking at how much they submerge in a liquid during your exam. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.